in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. For each in their own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The gospel lesson comes from the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Let's stand for our gospel lesson this morning. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all of the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seat, seated. It's Easter. And I, I love all of the gospel renditions of Easter because all it does is clarify the fact of who really told the first story, the good news of the resurrection. And it wasn't the guys, ladies. It was the women. It was. It said so right there. They're the ones that went there that first Easter morning to tend to the body of Jesus. Now, granted, Jesus had been taken care of on Friday night by Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, but they still wanted to make sure it was done right. Yeah, you know how we are, women. We've got to make sure it's just right. And it was their Lord and Savior that they wanted to make sure that it was absolutely perfect for. And so they get there, and what do they see? An open tomb. Oh, my goodness gracious. And then all of a sudden, as they're hanging out there for a minute, these two guys in dazzling robes pop in. I'm not sure I would have hung around much longer. I think I would have run. I don't know. How about you? Would you have probably run, too? Yeah, it would have been a little scary. But they said, why are you seeking the living among the dead? Why are you seeking the living among the dead? How many times do we seek living things among the dead? It's not normal. People go to cemeteries, which, you know, that's the place you go to remember the ones that have passed on. But actually, those ones that have passed on are still living in your heart, in your memories. They don't leave you when they pass from this earthly life. So you can remember them anytime. You don't have to go to the cemetery. Although every now and then it's nice. But it's the idea that they went and what did they find? They found two angels reminding them of what Jesus said. Go and tell my brothers what I told you before that the evil sinners would take me and would kill me and on the third day I would rise. And I will go before them to Galilee meet me there. And what did they do? They went and they did exactly that, which is a good thing. But what happened when they did it? 
oh, by the way, disciples, this is what they told us. And what did it say? And they didn't believe them. Oh, you foolish people. Jesus at one point even said to the disciples, oh, you foolish people. Because they didn't believe what people, what he was telling them, what was told to them. But Peter, good old rambunctious Peter, that's what I like about Peter. He and I are a lot alike. Sometimes we jump in both feet first and get both feet firmly planted in our mouths, but it's always fun. But what does he do? He gets up, he runs to the tomb, and he finds it exactly as the women say. It's empty. The grave claws are folded up, lying there nice and neat. Apparently Mary taught her son to make his bed up after him nice and neat. And he went back, and they waited. But that's the thing, is that we don't seek death here in the church. We seek life. The life that comes from Jesus Christ. The life that lights the faces of everybody when you see things that thrill you. That row and part of another one this morning is enough to make me happy forever. And when we have even more than that, it's even more fun. But it's those faces that make me remember what my job is. It's to tell the good news of Jesus Christ that he was crucified, buried, and rose again. That's the message that we're asked to tell because of who we belong to. Everyone is, that has given their life to Jesus Christ has a mission from God to tell the story of Jesus Christ to the world. Friday night, for those of you that weren't here, we had six folks, seven folks actually, who told what went on in the, that last day of Jesus' life. It was a real, rather dark thing, but in the long run, what it did was it helped people to see what Jesus did, what he went through, and what other people's perceptions were. It wasn't something that you can just shake off because it was that Good Friday that brought about the glorious Easter Sunday. All day yesterday I kept thinking of what a glorious day it was and go by places like out front with the daffodils blooming and I'm going, it's awful hard to think of this as quiet Saturday with everything so bright and beautiful. But it's all the more bright and beautiful this morning. The sky is blue. There, last time I looked, there were a few clouds out there. But the daffodils are still blooming. We have a blooming cross, too. But it's the wonderful thing that we have in remembering that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, that he told the people what he intended for them to do, and that we are given the same message. Go and tell the others that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Let's pray. Mighty God, we offer you our thanks for the joy of this day, the joy we have in being here, in worshiping you, in sharing with friends and family and people we don't know, but we know they love Christ, so they're a part of our church family. We ask now, Father, that you will continue to help us to go through this week sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, that he has risen from the dead. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. We come to offer these gifts this morning as a testimony to the glory of Jesus Christ and our commitment to him. Let us present our tithes and offerings this morning.
from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him, above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Mighty God. Bless these gifts to your reign here on earth, that it might shed your word further than we could ever think. Bless what we've given, multiply it. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated. If you would take out your purple communion liturgy. The resurrection has begun. The day of celebration is here. We gather at the table to share in the banquet of life. All who wish to follow the way are welcome to eat and drink at God's table. Christ is risen. Whoops, wait a minute. Loving God. We praise that at times we do not share in the joy of the resurrection, but are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but re